Hello, everyone. I've got the top of the hour on my clock, so we are going to get started. We've got lots to cover today. So I hope everyone is doing well, um, and I'd like to thank you for taking time out to join us for this webinar on improving infrastructure resilience. So our country's infrastructure is desperately in need of investment. The U.S. Army, or the excuse me, the American Society of Civil Engineers (ASCE) has released their quadriennial uh, infrastructure report card in 2021 and gave the United States infrastructure an overall grade of C minus. Well, this is an improvement technically over the 2017's D plus grade. Uh, there's still a lot of work to be done as 11 out of 17 categories are still in the D range with elements approaching the end of their service life and exhibiting significant deterioration. The ASCE estimates that the US will need to spend multiple trillions of dollars by 2025 to fix the country's roads, bridges, dams, and other critical infrastructure. And President Joe Biden has already proposed a $2 trillion infrastructure plan that we know passed uh, just not long ago. Similar degradation of infrastructure and the corresponding big repair bills can be seen all across our international network, from Latin America to Europe to Asia Pacific to the SADC in Western Africa to the Middle East, all over. Infrastructure development for highways and road corridors faces many challenges when it comes to project design and construction. Building asphalt or concrete roadways over soft soils requires thick base layers of expensive stone, and pavement surfaces often fail just a few years after installation. Expanding road widths requires steepening corridor embankments, leading to potential slope failures that can cause road closures and damage. And stormwater management alongside roads is an increasingly common concern due to limited construction space and larger storm events. Presto Geosystems provides cost-effective, low-maintenance quality solutions for all of these types of it, potential issues using our GWeb 3D soil stabilization system. In this webinar, we're going to discuss how to utilize these solutions to address the challenges of aging infrastructure. So a little bit about me. I'm your host, Sam Justice. And I am a licensed professional engineer in the state of Wisconsin with degrees in civil and geotechnical engineering. I'm one of the engineers here at Presto Geosystems, and we manufacture industry leading erosion control, stormwater management, and porous pavement products, all of which are made in the upper Midwest of the United States. Through an extensive national and international distribution network, we offer technical and site support, as well as free project evaluations from our in-house design engineering team, of which I am a part of. So here are some of the things that I can hope that you're going to get out of today's presentation. Understand how our products can provide permanent solutions in building roads, as well as along roadways. And understand how the geocell technology works in challenging soil environments. Then learn about different applications where the GeoWeb GeoCell technology can be used in road building and learn how they can manage, help manage stormwater and stabilize slopes in roadway right of ways. And finally, learn how the GeoCell technology can prolong your pavement life. So you're all muted for this webinar, um, but if you do have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat tab or excuse me, the questions tab within your go to webinar menu. I'll see those, and at the end of the presentation, I'm going to have some time for a QA and a where I'll go over those. Okay, so let's get into a little bit of general information about GeoWeb GeoCells in case you're unfamiliar with this type of technology. So the GeoWeb system is our version of the GeoCell technology and consists of two main attributes. The first is going to be the cell or the container size. The cells come in three diameters, small, medium, and large openings, with cell heights of three, four, six, eight, and 12 inches. So these dimensions are going to depend on your project details and vehicle loading requirements, that sort of thing. And so we're going to be able to help you determine which one is going to be most appropriate for your specific job. And then there are also five section lengths to best fit your project needs. So there's a lot of different mix and match options that you can choose from. And we're here to help you decide which is going to be the best for your project needs. So another thing I want to point out is going to be the ultrasonically welded seam, and that's where all of the connecting points are. That's very important to the function of a geocell. So the stronger the seam strength, the better the performance of the geocell. 
And the strong seam allows for heavier infill material, steeper and taller slopes, and better lifetime performance. The GeoUp system is produced using high quality virgin high density polyethylene HDPE resin for consistently strong welds at each cell junction, while also maintaining semi rigid ductile properties within the cell walls. It has high stress crack resistance and overall toughness and a long term durability in the environment. So, our GeoCells don't use fillers or exotic polymer blends, anything like that because they can ultimately reduce that weld strength and reduce the environmental stress crack resistance. And these are some of the things that we can see offered in some competing GeoCell products in the name of increasing cell wall stiffness. So to avoid weld failures and the damaging effects of differential settlement, uniformity in performance across all elements of a GeoCell system is gonna be much more important than just stiffness alone. So it's not necessarily the most important that you remember all of those different terms. Really the thing that we want you to take away from this is the idea of uniformity. It's not helpful to prioritize a single property of the GeoCell to the detriment of others. It's best to find a way to be the most uniform in all of those different properties to get the strongest and longest lasting product. So that's kind of what we want you to take away from all of that. So there's, like I said, there were two attributes. So the second attribute for the GeoWeb system is going to be the infill material. So that's going to be what you put inside the container. An important benefit of the GeoWeb system is that even a low quality aggregate, a sand or even salvaged materials, such as recycled concrete, can be used to infill the cells. Using salvaged aggregate or sand can save a significant amount of money on material and hauling costs if you can just use what you have on site. We can also eliminate the fines content of a material if desired, since the cells provide the confinement and aid in compaction of cohesionless soils. Without fines, you can significantly improve the drainage and let water flow freely through the system preventing poor pressure buildup and the global failure of the cross-section. And the ability to use sands and low quality aggregates really sets the 3D GeoWeb system apart from things like planar geogrids and geotextiles. Those products require the use of high quality materials with really high friction angles to achieve optimal performance. With the GeoWeb system, low friction angle materials are just fine. The GeoWeb panels can still achieve their full potential even when using poor quality materials. So huge cost savings to think about. One thing we do want to point out is that all of our products are made in the USA. So like I said, mo all of our uh, actual manufacturing is done in the state of Wisconsin, so in the upper Midwest. Um, our resin is US sourced resin, so we do meet all made in America um, and buy America standards. So if you are working on say a federal project or some project that has those standards that wants those made in the USA uh, conditions met, we do meet those with all Presto Geosystem products. So just a little disclaimer. Uh, so with the geo web panels, um, you do also need some system components. And those are gonna be all of the supporting pieces that help the geo web system protect the road surface, work on your, your slopes, that sort of thing. And they also ensure that uniform performance of an interconnected system. So there's that word again, uniform. So that's gonna help protect against those damaging effects of deformation and differential settlement in response to applied loads. So the ATRA key is gonna be the first component of a completely integrated system connecting each individual panel of the GeoWeb into a single web that's gonna cover your entire project area. It allows for faster installation of the GeoWeb and will last the lifetime of the project, ensuring that this project is gonna be protected and that the system is not gonna fail under anticipated loads. So the specific engineering values of the ATRA key will ensure that the system holds up to loading over time without the corrosion that you'll see in metal staples or the failure of underperforming cable tie systems. And our spec sheet calls out the specific engineering values for this patented connector. So it's definitely something to keep uh, in mind that when you do call out for a geo web or a geo cell system, 
to have this type of connector and not allow for an inferior product. So if you are working on a slope, um, you know, you're going to start needing to anchor it in place um, as the driving force of that infill material exceeds the available frictional resisting force of your slope. Um, you know, pretty standard stuff there. So the first option, because we have two options for anchorage, the first is going to be with the ATRA anchors. And these hold the geoweb to the slope and then penetrate directly into the ground. So it's put in along the slope face. So if corrosion resistance is required due to project conditions, maybe you're along a coastline where you're in a saline environment, Presto has an HDPE ATRA speed stake that is designed to work specifically with the GeoWeb system. And that's actually what's shown in the photo there is the fully HDPE stake option. So there's a couple different options for stakes um, if that's what you are looking for. The other option for Anchorage is gonna be with a tendon system. So for steep slopes, a slope where the native soil is highly erodible and driving in stakes would actually cause damage, or if you're over a surface that can't be punctured, so if you're working, say, over a, a geomembrane liner system, you can use tendons to anchor the system. So the ATRA tendon clip transfers the load from your infill material to the tendons and up to the crust anchorage system. Uh, so only the, G, the excuse me, only the ATRA tendon clip is specifically designed to fully transfer the forces placed on a geo cell. So every accessory and every feature that we offer at Presto Geosystems has been designed and tested specifically to work together so that we can go from problem to design to construction solution with a single system that models uh, the real world forces that you're going to see when you actually get out onto your project site. So in order for a geocell system to perform uniformly, it's critical that both the factory welded junctions, so those are the internal junctions, that ultrasonically welded seam that I mentioned a couple slides ago, and then also the field jun joint junctions that connect the individual panels. So these are the mechanical junctions that are done with that ATRA key, also mentioned a couple slides ago. So you want both of those to perform at a level that's commensurate with that of the cell wall. So the three primary elements of any geocell system, the cell walls, the internal connections, and the mechanical connections, the connectors, must perform uniformly as a complete system. Therefore, an incremental improvement in a single characteristic, i.e. something like wall stiffness, is only valuable if its complementary improvement has been made in the other two components of the system. So I mentioned this before a little bit, but the GeoWeb system is manufactured using a proprietary blend of high quality virgin HDPE. And our proprietary formula has stood the test of time for more than 40 years. We are the originators of this product and we've been doing it the longest. We've been doing it with the best results. And we have no fillers, no unstable polymer combinations, no exotic polymer alloy blends, none of that stuff. And for most typical sites, the GeoWeb system is gonna retain its durability for more than 50 years, with lab testing indicating 150 years without degradation, even at full exposure to the elements. So we stand behind our numbers so that you can deliver with certainty in a solution that you can build using materials that you trust. So it's just something to keep in mind um, you know, we don't have any fine print. We don't have any disclaimers on our spec sheets. What we say here is what you're going to get every single time. Um, so that's really important to keep in mind that you don't want something that uh, is maybe going to work. You want something that absolutely will work. Okay, so Presto offers solutions for many different road or highway applications. Load support for unpaved roads road shoulders, and then base stabilization underneath paved surfaces. Also, we offer slope stabilization, encompassing embankment slopes, bridge abutments, and retaining walls. And finally, stormwater control is going to be possible with the GeoWeb GeoCell system through roadside ditches, drainage channels, and culvert outfalls. So those are going to be some of the big main sort of topics that we're going to cover today. So the purpose of cellular confinement is pretty simple. Stabilize the movement of unstable soils, both horizontally and vertically. 
the weaker the subgrade conditions, the more practical it becomes to insert the GWeb system into your design. So it's an engineered system integrating multiple types of geosynthetics, such as a geotextile, with the best method of confinement and subgrade stress reduction in the industry. And so all, although today's discussion is going to focus on the GWeb system for roadway app infrastructure, there are lots of other applications, including intermodal yards, rail ballast reinforcement, highly steepened slopes, vegetated swales, stone and concrete line channels, and the seawalls. There's lots of different things that we're not going to cover today that are applicable with the GWeb system. So if you have a project that you aren't quite sure how you want to move forward with, feel free to reach out and we'd love to talk feasibility with you. So the GWeb system works like this. So when a vertical load is applied, the active earth pressures in the loaded cell pushes back against the passive earth pressures in the adjacent cells to form that stable system. So being confined, the soil responds passively. The infill is limited in its movements, represented by those yellow arrows in the center. And then the cells adjacent to the center loaded cell provide that passive resistance shown by the red arrow, so they're pushing back. And then the load is dispersed over a greater area within the lower layers as each cell helps support the one around it. And then the GWIP cells also transfer hoop stress. That's important in keeping the system intact and creates what we call the mattress effect. So the strength of the seams around each cell, the actual material property of the individual strips, and then that connection method between the panels, so those three factors that I've talked about a couple times now, are all going to be important in determining how the GeoCell system can improve the load-bearing capacity of your project. Strong seams, semi-ductile resin properties, and integrated connections are all critical to a well-performing system. The GeoWeb system and accessories are specifically designed to work together to be an effective permanent solution for roads in soft soil environments. So in a load support scenario, vertical deformation can only occur when either compression or compaction of those soils or through lateral movement of the soil, so if they get pushed to the side. By spreading out the load in the classic granular fill approach, one can reduce compaction of near surface soils but only with the GeoWeb cellular confinement system can one assure no lateral shifting that would lead to rutting. And the mattress effect reduces the stress reaching your subgrade. So in this diagram, you can see the stresses on the subgrade with an unsupported subgrade on the left and then with GeoWeb reinforcement on the right. And notice how there's a complete elimination of the highest stresses, those red and orange stresses, with the GeoWeb reinforcement. The stresses are both reduced and then they're also distributed over a wider area. That's that mattress effect. And that reduces the stress that reaches your subgrade and leads to a significant de decrease in deflection and rutting. So both good things. And by eliminating that lateral particle movement, uh, making sure that the stone or the sand or whatever material you're working with can't get pushed to the side by vehicle tires, the GWeb system can stabilize the surface, eliminating the need for constant maintenance. So the GWeb system is often compared to 2D geogrids, and they do start with a similar concept. However, due to the 3D nature of the GWeb, it's got that defined height, the integrated infill geosynthetic system acts as a composite layer where the lateral earth pressures are mobilized and transferred across a three-dimensional network of the interconnected cells. So it's basically just describing, saying, you know, the stress is going across the entire web system that the GeoWeb puts out there. So that's that mattress effect. And so because of this phenomenon, lower quality fill materials, including on-site salvaged materials, can be beneficially reused, therefore eliminating the need to import expensive aggregate that you would need if you were to use a geogrid system. So the GeoWeb system uses a thinner cross-section as well. Typically, a 6-inch GeoWeb system is equivalent to a 12-inch geogrid system. 
which can require two or more layers of geogrid depending on how soft the native soil is. And we can also eliminate the fines when desired since the cells provide that confinement and aid in compaction of cohesionless soils. So you can have that drainage, you can let the water flow through, you're not going to get the potential of that pore pressure buildup that could lead to failure of the system. And additionally, geogrids do little to stabilize the surface, requiring a lot more maintenance because you're still going to get those ruts that you would have to go back and constantly sort of rake out and refill in. Um, that's because that aggregate is still loose at the surface. Even if it's supported by a geogrid underneath, it's still just loose aggregate at the surface, and it's going to get pushed around by vehicle passes. So sort of continuing the theme of unpaved gravel surface roads, um, a washed or a clear stone can be used within the GeoWeb system, allowing you to build stable, permanent, low-impact development access roads. Site access roads, both temporary and permanent, are pretty common applications for the GeoWeb system. And as mentioned, heavy load vehicles can drive on the GeoWeb system immediately after infilling to finish construction. So you don't actually have to have all of the GeoWeb cells filled in with stone before you can start driving on it. As soon as you've got the stone in place, get those vehicles on there. Huge construction time saver. So with the GeoWeb panels and let's say a woven geotextile, you can actually bridge soft, wet ground, creating access roads with little to no disturbance of the natural environment. Saturated soils usually can't support any type of vehicle load. So having the ability to put a road in these types of environments is really helpful. Woven geotextiles can add an additional strength layer to the system and they're not gonna get clogged by subgrade materials. So it'll still allow for that water flow or water movement as necessary. A clear stone infill combined with the perforations within the GeoWeb cell walls allows water to flow both vertically and horizontally through the system, limiting the impact in sensitive environmental locations in ways that paved asphalt or concrete roads simply can't do. So the GeoWeb system can support uh, all highway traffic loading, um, making it a great option for extending shoulder areas along pretty much any type of roadway. The GWEB panels can be filled with either aggregate or what we call engineered fill. And that's just a mixture of stone and soil that allows for full vegetation growth while still allowing for vehicle loads. So both infill types can widen roads for emergency access and help manage stormwater runoff from the impervious asphalt pavement by allowing the stormwater to infiltrate through the GeoWeb system, reducing erosion concerns along pavement edges. So building on that thought of stormwater infiltration, I'll point out that the GeoWeb system can create true porous pavement systems. So the water infiltrates at the point of impact, reducing your surface runoff and reducing or potentially even eliminating the need for additional stormwater infrastructure, such as detention ponds. In this regard, porous pavements offer several regulatory advantages, and we have a lot of material on our website that can support your project through the permitting and design phase. I know there's a lot of local regulations that people have to follow when it comes to porous pavements. There's no, there's no one right answer with porous pavements, it seems. Um, so if you do have questions or if you are running into um, some, some pushback from local regulators, feel free to reach out to us. We're more than happy to help uh, either you or we can reach out to regulators as well and see what we can do to try and ease their concerns because this has been successfully used as forest pavements um, in the U.S. and internationally. So it's definitely something that is an option if you're looking for it. Okay, so now we're gonna switch from using the GeoWeb system as the road surface, as that sort of unpaved road, to a system for road-based stabilization. So the GeoWeb system can be used in place of or in conjunction with traditional aggregate layer underneath a paved asphalt or concrete road surface. So the same mattress effect from the GeoWeb panels that we had just discussed still applies in these sorts of applications with the system helping to bridge soft soils and adding strength to weak subgrades. When the base layer is, 
when it's excuse me when it's used as a base layer um, those stiffening effects of a uniform system I'm going to keep sort of hammering that word in place uniform system are translated up into your surface layer it's going to help keep the paved surface stable and in place reducing potential maintenance requirements plus the geob system can allow for a thinner cross section uh, as much as 50 to 70 percent based on uh, site specific details requirements that sort of thing so it means there's going to be a lot less excavation required on site so it's a great benefit if shallow public utilities like this project that was done through a small town in ohio they had shallow buried water pipes they just couldn't move couldn't damage so having the nice thin cross section for the geoweb system was a huge benefit and you can note that the asphalt layer can go down as soon as the geoweb panels are filled. So again, you don't need every single aspect of the system to be completed before you can move on to the next piece. So it helps with construction times, all of that stuff. You don't need any special cure time or special equipment. You can use your standard asphalt, standard asphalt laying equipment right over the top of the geoweb system. So nothing special about it. It's just a great way to help uh, reinforce the base layer underneath your road. And so the same benefits still apply for the geob system when it is in that base layer. The ability to use those, those low, low quality aggregates or sand materials is huge, meaning you can use your on-site and your salvaged materials without needing expensive and difficult to obtain engineered stone. And the stress reduction capacity of the panels will reduce the potential for deformation or settlement when placed over soft soils, which means you aren't going to see alligator cracking and wheel ruts forming on your surface. And a stronger base layer means a stronger surface layer and longer pavement lifetimes with less maintenance or section replacement. So this is a pretty common project that we see. I'm sure we've all dealt with roads like the one in the upper left. Uh, surface cracking, there's ruts, there's lots of patched areas that seem to start failing almost immediately, all that good stuff. And so this is what happens when the road is built over a weak base layer that can't fully support vehicle traffic. With the geoweb system, the failed asphalt and the base layers are removed, the panels are laid down and filled in with a granular material, and then a fresh paved surface is placed over the panels. Now you've got a strong base leading to a strong surface, it's gonna look much cleaner, it's gonna last much longer. You're not gonna to have to do patching, lots of maintenance, any of that stuff that you wanna do. It is just gonna be a nice clean road for a lot longer now. So the GWIP system can be used under all types of roadways from private driveways that are just gonna see like your standard car or pickup truck, all the way to full service highways. So up to Ashto H20, H25 loading, even higher loads for specially rated load vehicles. Um, so this was a project for the New Mexico State Highway and Transportation Department. So they were unable to proceed on a timely basis with any conventional alternatives, such as deep excavation with thick base layers or using chemical stabilizers on an extremely soft subgrade. So the DOT turned to the Presto GeoWeb system. The local sand material that was excavated ended up being used as the infill material within the geoweb system underneath the asphalt pavement. Nearly 200,000 square feet of geoweb panels went in the ground quickly and inexpensively, solving the DOT's budget and construction issues without needing the long cure times from chemical stabilizers or excessive excavation that the deep layers would have needed. Okay, so that's everything for using the GWAB in load support applications. So as your either unpaved surface or as a base stabilization for roadways. So now we're gonna move on to embankment stabilization using the GWAB system. So many times slopes and embankments need to be stabilized after or in conjunction with road and highway construction. So the GWAB system for slopes can be filled with any number of different materials, depending on your project needs. We will say topsoil with grass vegetation is probably the most common, but sometimes vegetation is not appropriate. So stone and concrete are also options for the infill material, as is salvaged material if you are trying to save a little bit on material costs if you want to use what you have uh, from excavation. 
So this is a simplified <laughs> diagram showing how the different system components interact with GeoWeb system to form a complete slope protection system. So the first thing that would go down typically is going to be a planar geosynthetic. This is either going to be a geogrid or more likely a geotextile. Then you would lay the GeoWeb panels in place on top of that. And note how the GeoWeb has a horizontal turn near the top of the slope. This is going to be important for that crest anchorage and erosion control. And as we mentioned way back in the beginning, we have a couple different options for anchoring. Uh, one is to use stake anchors using the Atra anchor. Um, either you can use metal rebar or we have that fully HTPE Atra speed stake. Um, and then the number and spacing of those stakes is going to be project dependent. And then if stakes are not appropriate, you can use a tendon with crest anchorage system. Uh, crest anchorage is either going to be usually a buried pipe dead man. Um, you could use earth or rock anchors. You could also tie off to an existing structure if you've got, say, a building or a bridge abutment, something near the top, and you can tie off to that as well. Um, you typically would not use both systems at once. You would either use stakes or you would use tendons. Um, there's not much benefit in using both together. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind as you would you pick one or the other. Um, and we can help you determine which one is going to be the most appropriate. There are reasons why you would choose one over the other. Um, and so that's something that myself and the rest of the engineering team here at Presto Geosystems can help determine. So then you fill in with whatever info material you are choosing, whether it's topsoil to help grow some grass, whether you need stone or concrete, goes directly into the GWeb panels. So the GWeb system works in multiple ways as it protects slope surfaces. It prevents significant movement of the soil by confining that soil into the individual cells within the GeoWeb. By separating the soil into these sort of smaller segments, the system resists mobilization of the entire slope face due to hydraulic loads, so you're not going to see that mass movement failure. It's also important to reiterate that the proper installation of the GeoWeb system includes embedding the panels into the crest of the slope. So this prevents the water from flowing underneath the panels and undermining the system. You don't want you know, rills or gullies forming underneath the panels because those could lead to failure. So the system provides a way to fully vegetate slopes that otherwise wouldn't be able to support sustainable plant life and increases the overall slope stability by interlocking the vegetated root zone. Like I said, you can also use stone or concrete materials within the GeoWeb panels again on slopes that would normally be too steep for allow to allow for those natural stone slopes. Like I said, vegetated slopes are probably the most common because they can result in sort of the most attractive slopes and they have little to no maintenance, but it is up to you to decide what is gonna be most appropriate for your project. Um, so it's important to note that the GeoWeb slope protection system is only for surface erosion issues. So because the panels are laid on the slope face, the system does not assist in the global stability of the slope. So if global stability is a concern, um, other measures are gonna need to be taken. And we're gonna talk about that in just a few minutes. Um, but if the slope itself is stable, but you're just seeing failure to some surface erosion, some stormwater uh, movements, maybe small uh, saturated soil movements, small little bits of mass movement, the GeoWeb slope protection system can help with that. So this was a vegetated slope over an unstable slope at an active gold mine in Canada. I had some variable slope lengths, some variable slope angles, um, lots of different needs that it would be difficult to do with a traditional slope that it's really easy to do with the GeoWeb system. Additionally, an access road was gonna be built on top of the slope uh, where that excavator is currently. Um, so the slope had to be stable enough to support those expected road traffic live loads. Again, really easy to do with the GeoWeb system. And so you can see space constraints at the toe of the slope. Uh, another access road. Uh, the slope really couldn't be regraded into something with a gentler slope angle. So a nice feature of the GeoWeb so slope system is shown sort of in the after photo, the inset there 
uh, where there's actually a guardrail installed at the crest and then a fence is installed at the toe. So there's no limit on adding this sort of extra infrastructure being installed near or even on top of the GWeb panels. So it's really great if you have these tight spaces where you know you need to have you know, fences, rails, anything like that can all be done even with the GeoWeb system underneath it. So this was another slope alongside a road in Ohio. It shows a pretty common problem that's solved with the GeoWeb system. So erosion and washout of soil slopes onto road surfaces is definitely a problem, it can cause lane closures, can cause damage to road surfaces, nothing good. So covering that slope with the GeoWeb system and then filling in with topsoil allows for a vegetated slope without the concern of having to constantly replace that soil after storm events. So we do recommend some sort of surface protection, such as hydro seeding or a biodegradable erosion control blanket that can be used over the panels, and that helps hold the soil in place until that grass has time to grow. Um, so just a little bit of extra protection um, in those early days and weeks after installation. So embankments along roadways have to deal with the sheet flow runoff from your impervious road surface. So this was a slope uh, done by the Maryland State Highway Administration. So sheet flow had actually caused sloughing of large sections of the upper topsoil layer, causing some deep rills and preventing vegetation from taking hold. It was just happening so frequently, the grass couldn't actually grow before it would be sloughed off again. So the GeoWeb system holds that soil in place while allowing the water to run over the surface of the panels. So you're not gonna get any more rills or gullies and that vegetation has that chance to form those deep roots that further stabilize the slope. And road widening is becoming really a lot more common uh, with a lot of state DOTs trying to find more roadway space without displacing any significant structures. So slopes or embankments that are usually found uh, where there is, excuse me, that's where those, the area is found within the slopes or embankments. Um, so you're really gonna try and steepen those to get a little bit of extra space along your roadway. Um, so this was a project in New Hampshire. The GeoWeb slope protection system allowed for that steeper slope to be created without erosion concerns. The system can be installed quickly and then vegetated immediately afterwards. So there's no long construction times that might shut down those important roads. And ease and speed of construction are important features of the GeoWeb system that everybody appreciates. So this was a project in Pennsylvania uh, that highlights a different issue that I haven't really mentioned so far, but that's geomem geomembrane liner protection. Um, so liners might be needed for any number of reasons. Um, in this case, there was a highway cut that actually exposed a pyrite bearing sandstone um, and created the potential for acid rock drainage. So well, that's not good. Um, so they ended up having to put an impervious liner over the system to help prevent uh, exposure of that sandstone to air and water. You also might need a liner if you're in a drainage pond or detention area, um, if you've got any sort of chemical runoff or leakage that you need to be able to maintain. Lots of different reasons you might need a liner, and you definitely want to protect that liner from exposure to the elements, from being punctured. Uh, you don't want animals running across it. You don't want you know squirrels skittering across and tearing it up, that sort of thing. Um, so using the GeoWeb system as a liner protection over top of the liner is a great way to extend the life of that liner with very minimal maintenance. So. The GeoWeb system basically rests directly on top of the liner. Maybe you put a non-woven geotextile sort of as a cushion layer between the two. Um, and that way you have uh, the ability to then fill it in with vegetation or stone, and then you don't have to worry about exposure of that liner. You would use the tendon system that we've mentioned a couple times. That way you're not puncturing the liner, which would defeat the purpose. Um, and so it's a great way to protect things like landfills, like I said, drainage ponds, leeches, leaching ponds, that sort of thing. Um, so if you do have any questions about liner protection, it is a great application of the GeoWeb system. Um, you can also go very steep uh, with the GeoWeb slope protection system as long as that slope is globally stable. Um, so this was a project along the Pan American Highway in Peru where the slope on each one of these terraces was actually 
a quarter to one, so about 75 degrees, which is steep. Um, so this was actually really unique because these terraces were actually hand compacted to that angle. So they're not natural slopes, which I don't think is a surprise to anybody, but that way they know that those slopes were gonna be stable. Um, here's what it looks like after they were fully uh, finished. They actually were able to get the GeoWeb panel on that 75 degree slope, get it to uh, hold itself in place with the appropriate crest anchorage, fill it in with soil and let that vegetation grow. Now you have, a, I don't know, kind of a cool looking unique uh, slope that's not going to uh, slough off, it's not gonna erode. You have that Pan American Highway to be able to go right through there. Um, so it's, it's a pretty unique application of the GeoWeb system, but it does show that it can be stable even at some really extreme face angles. So like I said, you can use other infill materials. Aggregate infill can provide a low maintenance solution, which is going to be good for areas where vegetation might not grow easily, or if you just have a big old supply of stone that you need to use. An aggregate infill does allow for that water infiltration, so it can collect runoff from road surfaces, and you can keep it clean pretty easily. Um, it's not going to stop things like volunteer vegetation, so you still, excuse me, you might still get dandelions growing in it, um, but you're not going to really see a lot of like dense vegetation growth if you don't want it there. Um, so it is going to be sort of a nice clean stone surface. So the Minnesota DOT used the GeoWeb surf system to help stabilize the surface around bridge abutments and then along railroad tracks and crossings. Um, so the flexible nature of the GeoWeb panels means that it can easily contour to the slope face and then also around obstacles such as piles and abutments. With the system in place, water erosion is prevented around those abutments, reducing maintenance costs. The entire project was actually a mixture of topsoil and vegetation and then also aggregate infill. With aggregate being used below the bridges where vegetation would have been difficult to establish. So you can actually mix and match your infill materials as well, depending on what you need, what kind of aesthetic look you might be going for. Then concrete is the last main infill type. Um, the system would no longer be considered permeable if you use concrete but there are no real maintenance requirements, which is a benefit. Um, and the embankment can then handle significant amounts of stormwater runoff if necessary. So the GeoWeb panels themselves actually act as the formwork for the concrete and as the internal reinforcement. So you don't need to build forms and you don't need to have rebar reinforcement. So the concrete is poured directly into the GeoWeb panels and then screeded to the top of the cell walls. So you have a consistent concrete depth and you don't have to worry about it slumping to the toe of the slope during installation. Concrete filled GeoWeb, or what we call hard armor slopes, are best used when you know that there's gonna be some pretty significant water flow. So here's a channel project that actually takes water runoff from a train and remodel yard down in Texas. The GeoWeb system uh, replaced a reinforced concrete design that had been in, uh, initially thought to be used, but was gonna go way over budget and take a long time to install. So the GeoWeb was actually a value engineered solution due to those cost overruns. Using the GeoWeb system actually saved the owner a couple million dollars, just not insignificant, but more importantly, it sped up that construction and allowed the yard to be in service much quicker than initially planned. And so the side slopes of the channel were uh, able to actually be a different depth than the base of the channel. Um, and that allowed for the ability for the base of the channel to also act as a vehicle access road. So again, you have that ability to sort of mix and match and make the GWEB system exactly what you need it to be. So you aren't having to put in extra concrete on the side slopes that's not necessary, but you still get that good reinforcement of the system. So it really creates the right solution for your unique project requirements. And like I said, the GeoWeb panels act as that formwork for the concrete, so you don't need to have any additional that are forms built, which can be tricky on slopes um, and will always extend construction time when you've got to get those built. Um, and so something to keep in mind with concrete is you do have to worry about that poor pressure buildup. Um, and so we just recommend including either drilling through weep holes or having weep uh, pipes installed during the concrete pouring process 
anything like that, all of your standard concrete options to help relieve that pore pressure buildup. Um, and so then this is that, that full extent of the channel um, ended up being more than a million square feet of GeoWeb. Uh, so a pretty large project um, really saved the railroad a significant amount of money and installation time, which obviously everybody loves to hear. Uh, so I did mention the GeoWeb system is only for that surface erosion. If global stability is a concern, or typically if your slope face is steeper than about 60 degrees, um, we would recommend putting in the GWEB as a retaining wall system. This is where you're actually going to stack the GWEB panel, panels vertically on top of one another to create some sort of MSE wall. Uh, so it's going to be similar to something like a Gabion basket wall or an MSE block wall, but it's going to be done with GWEB panels. And then the walls can either be filled in with topsoil or stone but you can get that nice living green wall if you use topsoil so it's always a benefit and they can be built to support vehicle and building loads they don't need to be independent of that other type of infrastructure they can be fully integrated um, so like i said there's kind of two options um, for geoweb walls you can either do a gravity wall or you can do a reinforced slope wall um, reinforced slope means you're going to have some sort of geosynthetic tieback uh, it's going to be a geogrid or geotextile, most likely. Um, and so there's some different uh, requirements for each of those. It's a whole topic all on its own, so we're not going to get into any more of it today. Um, but we do have a lot of information on it. We actually have a couple different webinars specifically about GWEB retaining walls. So if you do have questions about those, feel free to ask them today. But I also urge you to check out some of our other webinars and a lot of our information on our website to see how you might choose between a gravity or a reinforced option, how it can work with different infrastructure needs, that sort of thing. Um, but either way, it is definitely an option if you know global stability is a concern for your project. Uh, and so just a quick little case study, everybody loves those. Um, so this was for the Ohio DOT, um, where they actually had a uh, rock wall that was being constructed. Um, this was their option to try and extend their roadway was to, to dig out this rock wall and it was having some erosion issues. Um, so they actually placed the GeoWeb system as a fascia along the bottom of the rock wall to help protect against uh, that rock fall potential and that erosion concern without taking up a lot of that horizontal space that they had just claimed and they needed for their road. So some interesting applications that you can use the GeoWeb retaining wall system for. Um, I think it's really cool. Like I said, we've got a lot of good information. We have some other webinars, definitely check those out, uh, but always happy to talk about it as well. Okay, last topic for today, I'm running a little late. Um, so we're gonna use the GeoWeb system for stormwater control. And this is gonna be in place of typical stormwater infrastructures along roadways. So a GeoWeb channel protection system is gonna be really similar to the slope protection system. You can cover either the entire channel, so both side slopes and the channel bottom, or you can do just a single embankment um, or both side slopes and not the channel bottom. Again, mix and match. So continuous or intermediate flows, low to high flows, and a variety of channel dimensions are all possible with the GeoWeb system. Um, and this system is usually more economical than using solutions such as large riprap stone or heavy gabion baskets. And again, you can do a couple different infill materials to meet any of your flow needs. So, topsoil with vegetation, stone, or concrete, uh, and sort of expand from there. So the GeoWeb system can be placed along embankments of stormwater channels to help prevent erosion due to fluctuating water levels. So low flow situations are easily handled by the vegetated GeoWeb system, creating natural looking embankments without intensive maintenance requirements. So the GeoWeb system does not need to cover the bottom of the channel if you do have that sort of continuous low flow along the bottom of the channel. You just want it on the embankments, that's totally fine. The type of vegetation within the GeoWeb panel, and this applies in all scenarios, but I'll mention it here, um, the type of vegetation is actually not important to the function of the system. So choosing plants that are native to the area, and especially in these sorts of scenarios, okay with an occasional soaking, it's going to be a big help in reducing your potential maintenance requirements. Um, you're not going to want to put Kentucky bluegrass in if you're somewhere in Arizona. 
might not work so well. So just pick something that's local to your area, something that you know is going to grow in your climate. Uh, so as I mentioned, the vegetated geoweb system has a lower cost than a riprap line channel. And since you don't need uh, to import those large stones, you can use your local topsoil that you have on site. There's also less maintenance for these type of systems. Uh, riprap channels need constant inspection to replace lost stone and remove weeds. Um, with a vegetated channel, the only maintenance is the occasional mowing if you want, uh, which can be done with your standard lawnmower, no special equipment required. And finally, vegetated channels just have better aesthetics than riprap channels. They look cleaner, they look a little more finished. People tend to uh, not want to throw their trash in them quite as often. So better sort of aesthetics all around. So Presto has engaged and we've done extensive research with Colorado State University to show how the GeoWeb system works with different types of infills under a variety of flow conditions. So what we determined was that if you were to do a topsoil system and then cover it with a turf reinforcement mat, it can resist extremely high flows, allowing velocities up to 30 feet per second and then shear stresses of 16 PSF, which is huge. Uh, if you compare it to the allowable four feet per second for a typical vegetated channel that doesn't have any sort of confinement, um, that's a pretty significant difference, four feet per second to 30 feet per second. Um, and so the TRM actually helps prevent that soil from scouring out of the cells, while the GWEB prevents uh, that super saturated soil from washing downstream. So they work together to make a really good system. Uh, we also did aggregate testing. Um, and the, the idea here was to see if we could reduce from large riprap size stones down to your typical crushed aggregate size. You also wanted to see what size stone would be needed to prevent stone washout. So the system just doesn't really work if the stone can get picked up by the water movement and moved around. So we needed to determine what was going to be the most appropriate stone size. Um, so the results were pretty impressive. Um, if we remember, we were just talking that the vegetate system can handle up to 30 feet per second. Uh, max velocity with a stone system, you can go with 18 feet per second. Um, this might seem a little counterintuitive, but if you think of the strength of a properly rooted grass compared to a single piece of stone, it makes a little more sense. And so remember the main objective was to determine the reduction to from riprap size stone to crushed aggregate within the GeoWeb system. Um, so just something to keep in mind there. Also, with vegetated channels, you can only have water on a sort of intermittent basis. Otherwise, uh, you know, the grass is going to get soaked and it's going to die off. With stone, you can have continuous flow. Um, so it's also something to keep in mind is just what your project is going to see. Um, and then finally, you have concrete filled channels. So studies by the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation showed that concrete filled GeoWeb is going to be the most cost effective, lowest maintenance solution for water conveyance channels. Um, so this was actually a geoweb system over a gene membrane liner out in Colorado in a mine that was out there um, and actually carried water from the Colorado mountains uh, all the way to agricultural fields in California and Utah. So a pretty, uh, pretty significant piece of infrastructure um, and they chose to go with the geoweb system for that. So that's a great uh, sort of testament. Um, and so once the geoweb system is installed, um, it actually is, like I said, it's going to be that formwork concrete directly into it makes it really simple for the installation process um, and it is considered a flexible system even with concrete um, and that's because it, the concrete is sort of broken up into those individual geo cell cells um, and so that allows it to con contour to the natural environment a little bit better so you don't have to do quite as specific grading before laying it down that sort of thing um, so it's really nice if you know that you are in a more natural environment that you need to uh, sort of follow those contours. Uh, and again, we have some pretty impressive results from our Colorado State University testing. Um, so it actually maxed out the flume at 36 feet per second um, with no degradation of the G-Web or the concrete infill. And there was no visible loss of the soil that had been placed underneath the G-Web panels. Um, so it's an excellent system for protecting channels against erosion. 36 feet per second is just the max that the testing flume could do. We've seen significantly higher than that. And 
theoretically, there is no amount of flow volume that would be too much over this type of system. Um, so if you know you're in a high flow situation, concrete is going to be the way to go. Um, if you are interested in how that testing was done or a little bit more about the results, um, these were all done by Dr. Chris Thornton at Colorado State University. Um, we have that research and it is available if you are curious. Um, so just let us know if you need a copy. Um, and so this homeowner channel here, uh, it was actually done down in Florida, shows how the G-Web could actually be built as a retaining wall and act as a stormwater conveyance channel. So nice little twofer there. Um, so the stack system can be used in urban areas where you don't have a lot of space because there's already a, that existing infrastructure. Um, and so it can handle more volume within the same footprint. Um, and then vegetation can be used above the water line for a nice natural look, and then concrete used below that water line so that you know you don't have any of the potential for scour or erosion failure that might be happening. Um, and so the GWIP system can be used in conjunction with RIPRAP if that's what you're looking for. Um, again, if you have that potential for very high flows, this was a culvert outfall in uh, Wisconsin. So stronger surface protection over the panel, such as a core fabric, uh, can be used to withstand higher flows on a case-by-case -case basis. We can help you determine if that's possible. Um, but keep in mind, it is intended for short duration events. Um, vegetation is just not going to be able to last long if you have that continuous water flow. Uh, and the flexible geo panels can easily accommodate culvert pipes or other obstacles, um, so there's no gaps in your protection. Um, and that includes installing things such as sauna tubes, um, and so that allows for the addition of guardrail posts or, uh, you know, if you've got other infrastructure, if you've got cables or ties or anything that needs to go down there, having a sonar tube is a great way to have space for that. Um, so we often hear from contractors how easy it is to install the GeoWeb system, even if they've never worked with it before. Um, so we have lots of things like installation guides and tutorial videos. Um, and we can also provide on-site or personalized virtual assistance when required. Um, so we're not just selling you a product, we are trying to get a whole solution, including how construction works. Okay, so in the summary, every project is going to be different, but the GeoWeb system has a solution that's going to be right for you. Um, so it can be added to road projects to provide a more stable and long-lasting surface course for unpaved roads, for reduced maintenance and repairs. For paved surfaces, the GeoWeb system can reduce the pressure on the subgrade to reduce differential and long-term settlement, which will provide extend your pavement life. You can use have the ability to use low quality aggregate or even salvage sand, saving a significant amount of money. You can use it on embankments for uh, channel applications where there's water flow, or if you just need to do some roadway widening, lots of different options there. So whatever you're attempting to do, the GWeb system has great flexibility of design to meet your project needs. And it's a complete system solution for ease of installation and peace of mind. And so part of our complete solution is our technical assistance. Going to throw a little shout out for myself and the engineering team here, um, where we work closely with landscape designers, engineers, contractors, anybody who's interested. And we offer a free project evaluation surface. Um, and so we do have a form on our website at prestogeo.com. You can fill it out with any sort of project information you have. You can attach documents such as geotechnical reports or site picks, that sort of thing. It comes directly to myself and the rest of the engineering team. And then uh, within three business days, but usually a lot faster than that, uh, we provide this complete design recommendation. So we're going to talk about the info material. We're going to talk about the geo panels themselves, what size and dimensions you might want to use, whether you have any anchorage requirements, anything like that. We're going to help you uh, determine what's going to be the best for your project. Um, and we do deliver quality and over 40 years of expertise guaranteeing each shipment shipment meets or exceeds our specifications so you can deliver certainty and build with materials that you can trust no disclaimers no fine print um and i just want to throw this in here one of the biggest questions we always get is about cost no surprise there um, especially if this is going to be a new technology for you or your area Having the idea of how much the GeoWeb system costs compared to other stabilization techniques is going to be really important. So here we have a basic comparison of how the GeoWeb system for a load support application is going to work. And this is for a gravel road surface. So this comparison shows the difference in both price and cross-section depth for an aggregate-only unreinforced section. 
and then a section using geogrids and geotextiles, and then one using GeoWeb with imported stone, and then one using GeoWeb where they were able to use on-site salvaged materials. So four different options. Um, and you can see that the GeoWeb system is both thinner and cheaper than the other methods. Um, and especially if you can use that on-site material, you're saving a lot of material costs there. Um, so it's gonna be significantly cheaper if you can use that salvage material. Um, so of course your mileage may vary um, depending in terms of excavation and stone cost, but this is sort of a good starting point that you can work with. Okay, a little bit of housekeeping, we've reached the end. Um, so we've made it easier and faster for you to obtain your PDH certificates. We do have uh, what we call our webinar dashboard. So this is where you can easily view our library of webinars and download your PH certificates for any on-demand webinars that you've completed. Your webinar dashboard will keep a record of all of the webinars that you've completed along with your PDH certificates that you've earned. Please note that the certificates from the live webinar, so if you listen today, Tuesday, um, those are managed by GoToWebinar. Um, so you're not gonna see your certificate from today on the webinar dashboard. Um, you will receive an email from GoToWebinar within 24 hours containing a link to download your PDH certificate. And then in two to three days, you'll receive a separate email from Presto Geosystems with more information about accessing the webinar dashboard and some other helpful resources. Um, so if you make sure you check your spam folders, um, but you will receive two emails, go to webinar, Presto Geosystems. So look out for both of those. Um, so this webinar has been recorded, um, and so it will be placed on the webinar dashboard within two to three days, so you can review it if you would like. And that's my presentation. Um, so thank you for attending. Um, my contact info is up here. Feel free to reach out to me at any time. If you have a specific project that you want to discuss, if you have maybe some feasibility questions, if you just want to talk more about the technology, anything like that, I am more than happy to discuss any of these sorts of things that we covered today or didn't cover today in more detail. Um, so I have gone uh, my total hour. So if you do need to log off, I do say thank you. Um, check out for those emails in a couple days. I'm gonna get to a Q&A session. Um, there's some really good questions that like have come in. Um, so I'm gonna stay on for another maybe five, 10 minutes and try and answer some of those questions. Those questions will be in the recording. So if you have to log off now, definitely get on in a couple days on the webinar dashboard, scroll to the end of this presentation and you'll get this Q&A session. Okay, so let's see what some of these questions were. Um, so what are some of the actual loading abilities or loading requirements for the GeoWeb system? So the GeoWeb system can support basically any type of load, um, whether it's wheeled or tracked equipment, um, so you can go all the way through your standard AASHTO highway load rating, so up to AASHTO H25 loading. That's going to be, you know, your fully loaded uh, fire trucks, construction equipment, that sort of thing. Um, it can also support, you know, really heavy construction equipment if you've got um, cranes, if you've got, um, like, uh, if you're on an intermodal yard, you'd have um, like container uh, uh movers, that sort of thing, blanking on the site name right now, but really there's no specific limit on what type of vehicle can be supported with the GeoWeb system. It is just going to potentially change what the cross section looks like. And so that's why you want to um, do one of those free project evaluations that I mentioned here at the end. Let us know both what your vehicle loading requirements are and what your site conditions are, and we can help you determine what that cross section is going to be. Um, but yeah, there's not really a, a maximum load that we can't exceed. It is just going to potentially change what that cross section is. So good question. Um, so what are you putting underneath the GeoWeb? Yeah, so a bunch of pictures you would have seen something underneath the GeoWeb system, um, especially in load support applications. So this is typically going to be um, some sort of geotextile. Um, Non-woven or a woven are going to be one of the two main options. Um, and you would do this for a number of reasons. Um, typically you would use non-woven if you're looking for some sort of just separation. Um, if you wanna have a little bit of filtration options, um, you would put a non-woven geotextile underneath the GeoWeb system. 
this isn't going to add any strength to the system it is just sort of acting as that separation layer so if you've got um you know a, a stone surface and you want to build topsoil on top of it you could put a, geo, a non woven geotextile down and then the geo web panels filled in with topsoil and that has that little bit of separation um, allows for a little bit better vegetation growth um, if you do need a little bit of extra strength to the soil or if you've got say a really clay soil something that has a lot of fines content non woven geotextiles tend to clog pretty easily so you might go to a woven geotextile that actually adds a little bit of extra strength to your system, which can be beneficial if you've got a really soft soil environment. Um, so there's a couple different options for what you would put under there. It's definitely something that we would give our recommendation for. Um, so it is two different things. You'd have the geotextile and then the geo panels. They're not an integrated system. Those are two separate pieces that work together. Um, but you basically, you buy them at the same time and you install them at the same time. Um, and then you know you can have other things underneath the system you can have that liner if you've got a geomembrane liner we can use that as geoweb uh, protecting system like for that so i mentioned that briefly um if you've got uh like utilities infrastructure you might want to put a excuse me a non-woven geotextile over top of the utilities just as a little bit of protection um so there's a number of different things you might do um there, again, there's sort of no one right answer, uh, but we're more than happy to discuss what uh, what our recommendations would be um, for, for any sort of project in that sort of category. <laughs> um, uh, so great, great question about addressing um, utility repairs underneath the GeoWeb system. So yeah, especially um, there was that one or two photos I showed where the GeoWeb system was going um, over public utilities on a roadway. Um, so definitely you might need to get into those utilities, do some, some pipe repair, any upgrades, anything like that. And so that's possible with the GeoWeb system. Um, so you would cut through uh, the surface layer, asphalt or concrete if you have it, um, or you would go through the GeoWeb system if it's an unpaved surface. Um, and basically you would cut directly through the GeoWeb panels, you would remove that section, um, you would remove the stone or sand or whatever infill do whatever repairs you need to do to your utilities. And then you would get a new panel of GeoWeb, basically put it right back into the section that you cut it off. You would take the Atra key, so that mechanical connector, connect it to the rest of the GeoWeb that's still in place around your utility cut, and then fill back in with stone, pave back over it if you need to, and you're good to go. Um, so it's definitely possible. We see it quite frequently. We have um, some, some standard recommendations and stuff that we can offer for that as well. Um, but you wouldn't treat it really any different than having to cut through any non-reinforced section of road to get to your utilities. It wouldn't interfere with that in any way. So great question. Um, so uh, there are some questions about um, the uh, GeoWeb for vegetated channels. Um, and why might you use a GeoWeb plus surface protection? So in our case, we tested with a turf reinforcement mat, so a TRM. Um, and so that's just something that we recommend um, to be placed over the GeoWeb system while you're waiting for vegetation growth. And so the idea is that what's really helping prevent scour when there's water flow over a vegetated GeoWeb system is the vegetation. It's the grass or the flowers or whatever you have growing in the channel. It can take some time for that to grow depending on your environment or depending on how soon you want those channels to be uh, to start being used. So in the time when between installation when it's going to just be topsoil without any vegetation and when that grass is fully grown, that root zone is fully interlocked, you need some sort of protection over top of that soil to prevent scour. And so that's where the TRM comes in. Um, and so that's why we recommend that. There are other options, doesn't necessarily have to be a TRM. That's just what we used in our study because we had to pick something. Um, and so we can give recommendations about what you, you might want to use, how it might affect um, how soon or not you can use the channel if you don't want to use one, that sort of thing. Um, but that's why uh, that particular study uses that is because you do need some sort of protection for the soil 
as you wait for the vegetation to grow. Um, let's see some other questions. Um, let's see, I'll do one last question here because I've gone quite over. Um, so any experience in seawall construction? So basically where there's going to be um, wave action. So yeah, if you're along uh, riverways or you're along the coastline, if you're maybe in the Great Lakes where you've got some, some significant potential for large wave action, you can use the GeoWeb system. Um, so we have used it um, both in the sort of single layer slope protection system and then also as the stacked GeoWeb retaining wall. So it sort of depends on what you're looking for. Um, but you can use uh, usually either stone or probably more likely concrete as your infill material to help uh, withstand that wave action. Uh, but the GeoWeb panels themselves are capable of handling wave action, water flow, water fluctuation, that sort of thing in those types of environments. Um, and because it is that HDPE, it is going to be chemically inert, so it's not going to react if you are in a saline environment. So if you're in a, a coastal port, um, you can put it in salt water and you're not going to see any degradation because of that. Um, so yes, we do have some experience with that. Um, if you do have a specific project, I'd like to talk to you about it more. Um, but if you're just sort of wondering about feasibility, then the answer is yes. Um, we've done a couple successful projects um, along the, the East Coast and the, the New England area. We've seen some good success there. Um, so yeah, you can. it's strong enough to handle sort of battering from wave action or um, you know the, the faster, heavier water movement that you would see along a coastline as compared to you know a detention pond, that sort of thing. So great question. But I have gone uh, quite over time. So if I haven't gotten to your question, please feel free to reach out to me directly. Or we have a uh, uh, contact us on our website at prestogeo.com. Uh, you can reach us there as well. Thank you so much for attending. I hope you have uh, got something good out of this. Um, and we will see you for the next one. Have a great day.